Dr. Peter Steiger and his colleagues study how autotoxic drugs cross the blood labyrinth barrier in the inner ear. His laboratory's research is key to finding ways to prevent drug-induced deafness that can be caused by extended antibiotic treatment in premature infants and patients with systemic inflammation. This animation reviews the function of the inner ear and describes the potential mechanisms that allow aminoglycoside antibiotics to exit blood vessels and enter the cochlea. When sound waves enter the ear, they vibrate the tympanic membrane, which oscillates the tiny middle ear bones. These bones vibrate the oval window, which generates fluid pressure waves in the cochlea. And the cochlea translates these pressure waves into sound by activating hair cells that send electrical signals to your brain. Let's take a look at a cross section of the cochlea. As pressure waves travel through the fluid-filled cochlea, they cause the tectoral membrane to push against the cochlear hair cells. These hair cell movements create signals that activate cochlear neurons, which send electrical signals to the brain. And this process gives you the ability to hear sound. Dr. Peter Steiger's laboratory studies how aminoglycoside antibiotic molecules can move from blood vessels into the stria vascularis and into hair cells. Let's take a look at the potential mechanisms that allow aminoglycosides to move into the stria vascularis. There are transcellular flux mechanisms, such as transitosis, ion channels, and transporter-mediated mechanisms. And there are paracellular mechanisms, such as leaky tight junctions, and immune cell-mediated vascular injury. Dr. Steiger and his colleagues study the molecular mechanisms that allow autotoxic drugs to cross the streal endothelial barrier, and more research is needed to tease out the complex biology that underlies autotoxic drug movement in the inner ear. For more information about Dr. Steiger and his research, visit the OHSU blog and the Oregon Hearing Research Center webpage.